To choose the proper last link, you'll need the customer's foot tracing. I don't take the foot tracing with a Sharpie, but in this instance I have darkened the tracing with a Sharpie so that we can see what I'm doing. On the foot tracing, I've marked where the bones for the ball of the foot are on each side, and I'm going to use that to help me determine the correct last length. When we talk about choosing last length, that length is represented by a number. This last is a size four and a half. Last length is chosen by heel to ball, not heel to toe. I need these marks to line up the last. I've got a size four and a half last here. I'm going to position it right on this tracing. In the back, I have the feather line of the last about 3 16th of an inch forward of the tracing of the foot. That's because both the back of the heel of the last and the back of the heel of the person have a curve. When you hold the pencil straight up and down, you aren't marking the actual spot where the heel meets the paper or where the feather line of the last is. This is why you position the back of the last ever so slightly forward of the foot tracing. I've got the last laid on here, and you can see how the ball of the last, the widest part of the last at the ball, is also meeting and matching the ball of her foot. That tells me I have the correct length for my last. If you don't have an actual last, you can also use the last bottom papers to choose the length of your last. I have the last bottom papers here, and I've cut them out so they are actually the shape of the bottom of the last. I chose a four and a half last. I've got the size four and a half last bottom paper here. If I position it on this tracing, just like I would position a last. So again, the last bottom paper at the heel is positioned about 3 16th of an inch forward of the foot tracing. And I position it properly. The ball of the last matches the ball of her foot and I know that I have the right length. Guys, I have an announcement to make. If any of you have ever talked to me about the Aquilum line of water-based glues, you will know that I always specify 
that these glues cannot be used for any application while the leather is wet at the time of application. That's what I've always said. Guess what? I was wrong. There is a way that you can do it. I have here a pair of shoes that Paige is making for her dad and I told her I would lay the soles for her. These soles are wet. I just stuck them on with the Aquilum 315 and it has a super strong bond. Now obviously he hasn't walked on these for years and years, but in my opinion this bond is going to work just as well as a Salma base glue. This is already super strong. So here's what I did. I got the sole ready and I put a coat of Aquilum 315 on the sole and let it dry completely. Then I put another coat of Aquilum 315 on the sole and let it dry completely. Then I soaked them in water for several hours, took them out, wrapped them in paper, put them in a bag, and let them sit overnight. Here's where I'm obviously going to have to figure out something different. I need to put some sort of wax paper or something between the layers because I did have a small problem with bits of paper sticking to the glue. It was only in a couple spots, but I don't want that to happen again, so I'm going to work on that. Do be careful when you wrap your soles in paper, it will stick. Came in the next morning and removed my damp and cased soles from the bag. I didn't put another coat of glue on. I put a coat of glue on the shoes and let that dry completely. And then with my damp sole, I reactivated that glue with a heat gun. So I just heated up the sole on the glue side until it got a little warm and got tacky again. And then I stuck the shoe to the sole and this is super, super strong. This is gonna work. I am so excited. I now have the option of completely eliminating solvent-based glues in my shop if I want to. That was the last holdout was laying soles and I have figured out how to do it and I do want to give credit to my husband Dale and John Fogg from Rhenia because they talked it over and realized the solution to this problem. I don't know how long ago I did it, but about a week ago I started a new pair of shoes. They're a pair for me, they're loafers, and I'm taking them to the shoemaking symposium in Oregon for the display table. So here's my sketches. I sketched a few different things. And then I want I want the loafer to have lacing on it somehow. I figured it out from my pattern, but I was just coming up with different ideas and I made this little swatch so I kind of know how to plan my lacing. I tried shorter laces and longer. Could you? Okay. Um, so these are my leathers. I have like this rose patent leather that I just got in Wyoming. And then my mom's letting me use some of her gold leather. Isn't that right? <laughs> I wasn't aware that I was letting you use your, my gold leather, but... <sighs> well, it's just for the I, lacing and, like, the kilt part. I guess since skirt. you've already started. Yeah. <laughs> I have all my patterns. Right now I'm just skiving pieces. So. Looks That's good. my project. I should have it done by June 24th. Is that when the symposium starts? Yeah, but we have to leave earlier. So why don't you plan for June the 20th? June the 20th. <laughs>